So we are going to talk about how to write 1 over 1 minus x as an infinite product. In order to do that, we have to start with some notation. When we talked about sums, we would use sigma notation to say that we're adding up a particular number of things. When we translate that from sums into products, we use pi notation, pi for product. So in this case, it functions the exact same way as sigma notation, but instead of adding things, we're multiplying them. In this case, we'll take the product from k equals 0 to n. Let's say we wanted to take that product with our function being 1 plus x to the power of 2 to the k. Let's see what that would look like for a particular value. Let's say we had n equals 3. In that case, our product p would be 1 plus x to the 2 to the 0 times 1 plus x to the 2 to the 1st times 1 plus x to the 2 to the second times 1 plus x to the 2 to the third. We have to think about a way to simplify this. And in order to do that, we're going to do a clever trick on this equation, which is we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus x. In this case, let's see what we get on the right side. Notice when we rewrite this product that we can simplify the exponents of these x's. So if we look at this first term, 2 to the 0 is 1. So what we really have here is just 1 plus x to the first power. After that, we have 1 plus x, 2 to the first power is 2. So we'll have x squared. Then we'll have 2 squared is 4. So we have x to the fourth power. And then 2 cubed is 8. So we have x to the eighth power. Now let's look at this product a little more closely, starting with the first two factors. What is 1 minus x times 1 plus x? Well, that's actually the factorization for a difference of squares. We can write 1 minus x times 1 plus x as 1 minus x squared. What happens when we multiply that by the next term? 1 minus x squared times 1 plus x squared. Well, that's exactly the same thing that we had here, but instead of x, we have x squared. This is still the formula for a difference of squares, but this time we're going to get 1 minus x squared squared is x to the fourth. What happens when we multiply that by the next term, 1 plus x to the fourth? What do you know? It's another difference of squares. This time instead of x, we have x to the fourth inside here. So we'll get 1 minus x to the fourth squared. That's x to the eighth. And we multiply that by the last term in our product, 1 plus x to the eighth. That's going to give us 1 minus x to the 16th power. So this giant product here, once we multiply by 1 minus x, is just going to give us 1 minus x to the 16th. Now this is a very nice simplification, but we want to be able to do this for an arbitrary value of n so that we can take the limit as n approaches infinity to get our infinite product. In order to do that, I'm going to clear the board to give us some more space to look at the general case. So now I've rewritten our same product, this time p sub n, as the exact same thing except the number of factors we have in here goes all the way up to x to the 2 to the n. When we multiply that by 1 minus x, we're going to see the same result that we did before, but now we want to take a look at what happens for an arbitrary value of n. Just like before, when we take 1 minus x times 1 plus x, that's going to give us 1 minus x squared. When we multiply that by 1 plus x squared, that's going to give us 1 minus x to the fourth. And we want to keep going like this until we get to this last factor over here. Notice every time we do this difference of squares, the exponent of our x is getting multiplied by 2. We go x, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the eighth. And that's going to keep happening until we get to the term before this last factor. So that would be 1 plus x to the 2 to the n minus 1. In that case, the factor right before that, once we multiply all of this out, is going to be 1 minus x to the 2 to the n minus 1. When we multiply these two factors together, again, it's a difference of squares, we get 1 minus x to the 2 to the n. And then we have our final factor right here to multiply on this side, 1 plus x to the 2 to the n. And that gives us our result of 1 minus x to the 2 to the n 
plus 1. That exponent of n plus 1 is going to give us our general value for 1 minus x times p sub n. Our goal is to find that value of the product for an arbitrary value of n. So to do that, we can just divide both sides by 1 minus x. In that case, we get p sub n is equal to 1 minus x to the 2 to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x. And this will hold for any value of n. This is the finite version of our product of 1 plus x to the 2 to the k. The question is, what if we take the limit as n approaches infinity? Well, that depends on the value of x. What would happen if we had x with an absolute value greater than 1? Say we had x equals 3. In that case, as n gets very large, we're going to have 1 minus 3 to the power of 2 to something large. It's going to be massive. 3 to some giant power is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we increase the value of n. So if the absolute value of x is greater than 1, then this limit will not exist as n approaches infinity. However, if the absolute value of x is less than 1, say we had a third instead of 3, then we would have a third raised to that giant power. That's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller going to 0, which means the limit as n approaches infinity of p sub n is going to be 1 over 1 minus x as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. So that is the infinite product formula for 1 over 1 minus x. The product from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 plus x to the power of 2 to the k. And we got that by realizing that if we take our finite product and multiply by 1 minus x, we get a bunch of differences of squares all the way down to the last factor. And that gave us a finite product representation where we could take the limit. This infinite product actually works for complex numbers as well, as long as the magnitude is less than 1. So now we can write 1 over 1 minus x, not just as an infinite sum, but also as an infinite product.